It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. That can mean only one thing. It's Trump week. Well, last week at the end of the show, I promised that um, the next time we met for Trump week, we would have more new wild things. Well, I can't disappoint. And the prediction is true. We have an entire list of things that have transpired in just one week's time that uh, is jaw dropping and you know might rock you out of your seat. But before we go down that list, I'm gonna to talk to our co-hosts that are joining us for Trump Week. That's Winston Welch and Stephanie Dalton. Welcome both of you. Thank you for, for attending, appreciate it. Aloha. Aloha, thank you. Aloha. So let's, let's just fire down the list because uh, since last week, we've had what I call a potpourri of uh, possibilities and they're all displayed during the press conferences the hour, hour and a half long press conferences each and every day. And Donald Trump is the ringmaster of, um, and he just doesn't disappoint. So let's just kind of go down the list and we'll discuss them. Uh, number one, Trump fires the Glenn, Glenn Fye, the, the IG that was tasked of providing oversight for the $2 trillion congressional fund. Uh, who knows how that's gonna be now taken over and, and provide proper oversight so that Congress could see and, and know exactly how this money is going to be uh, spent. Uh, Trump attacks the Health and Human Services IG for the March 31st report about, um, that was the one where 400 hospitals were, were uh, interviewed and um, the report basically said all these hospitals were woefully low on uh, PPEs and ventilators. Uh, Donald Trump got very upset when this question was raised to him during um, one of the press conferences. And um, so we'll talk about that. We are going to talk about the um, acting Navy Secretary, Thomas Modley, and his comments about Captain Crozier. And Captain Crozier was relieved of his duties uh, due to his concern about his crew and the infection of uh, COVID-19. And um, since that time, um, the Navy Secretary has resigned his position. Uh, we're going to talk about Donald Trump and his recent criti criticisms of the World Health Organization. And what I perceive as him uh, basically trying to deflect and redirect blame for the late response the United States has over this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, we're gonna also talk about Donald Trump since then is um, his acknowledged that Peter Navarro, his trade, um, his trade secretary and the, 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 the memo that was produced at the end of January predicting the deaths and the destruction of the economy. And that was at the end of January and, and Donald Trump acknowledges the memo, but of course says, I never saw it. So we'll talk about that. And last but not least, we have some news today that Bernie Sanders has dropped, uh, dropped out of the presidential run. So there's a mouthful, you guys. Um, let's just tackle the first one. What do you guys think about Donald Trump and his um, releasing Glenn Fine as the IG that was going to over, oversee the $2 trillion worth of congressional funds. What a surprise that was. Well, I think there's uh, some start with, Let's start with um, Let's start with Winston first. Stephanie, let's okay. go with Winston and then we'll hit, hit sure, you. Sure, sure. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I mean, it's, <laughs> how do you even start to wrap your head around every single day a new assault on our values, on our on, on morals, on ethics? It's 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 hard to overstate it's impossible to overstate the damage that's being done on an and really an hourly basis by this administration the fact that he that he kept this this fellow what in a week or two weeks uh, is surprising to me and uh didn't he say at one time that he would be the one that oversees everything but i guess he's put in um another lackey until he gets fired or crosses him or actually tries to do the right thing uh, which he'll definitely get fired on so uh, I don't put much credence in it at all. I, it's just shocking the endless uh, litany of uh, violations that have happened for the entire course of this administration, but especially egregious over this uh, entire COVID mishandling from the beginning to the end. And the, the immense amount of uh, deflection, blame, um, I think it's summed up by, I don't take responsibility for anything at all or I, whatever to, to that effect. Well, let me, let me ask you this uh, question, Winston. Didn't the law actually put in provisions that Donald Trump could not get involved with any kind of oversight, that there would be um, there would be oversight over this fund? Wasn't that written into the law? I thought that that was, but as we know, this administration 
it routinely ignores um, d d the law. Uh, bottom line, they ignored norms and, 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 and values and uh, upholding their responsibilities for this. So the fact that he fired someone that would potentially have oversight over even one of his businesses doesn't surprise me at all. Um, yeah. it, it, this is, I mean, as we said before, this is going to be a big slush fund, no matter how you slice it or dice it. Hopefully a lot of it will get down to, to uh, little people and, 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 and really, uh, well, the little people, the every man the little people, uh, yeah. and woman. <laughs> Yeah, the little people, um, give them, let them eat crumbs. But, you know, hopefully it will bleed down somewhere through there, um, how or when or why. But it, you you have to expect a, 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 a mass amount of a corruption, mismanagement, um, nepotism in, in these things in, in any state. But uh, this particularly with this administration, it, it's the norm. So we shouldn't expect anything yeah. less. So, Stephanie, what's your read on that one? Well, I was just going to share that without going into all of the steps of the regulations or the statute, that it isn't something that Trump can do easily. So um, not only is there a difficulty um, with the firing of this man, um, there's also the difficulty with the appointment because there has to be a certain status um, of, of the person recommended and, 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 uh, and he, this one doesn't have that status. So I, I'm just bringing this up to, um, to indicate that uh, there's gonna be more shifting around until Trump can get his person in there. And he does have somebody that he submitted that he really wants in there. So these two people in the front, the one that's been asked to go or told to go, and the one that's temporarily filling in, that he's gonna change. And there is a question as to whether the one that he's told to go can can be sent that easily. So it just makes me uh, recall how important the structure surrounding um, the appointment and dismissal of people in these roles and for, for malfeasance or cause or uh, it really need to be clear and, and certainly do need to be there to use in these circumstances. Sometimes we might have thought, oh, how cumbersome and how complicated. But when, when there's a rogue in charge, which unfortunately we have some indication there might be, that we need uh, a lot of, uh, of safety, safety nets to protect right, right. institutional issues. Well, yeah. we all know that the main criteria for Donald Trump and his appointments um, is one, get rid of people who are competent that are career service uh, federal employees, get rid of them and let me insert those that are loyal only to Donald Trump. So that's the criteria and that's what we've been working with for the last three years and he's pretty much gutted the federal system. Uh, let's jump around a little bit here. I want to talk about Donald Trump's recent, um, how should I say, he's trying to redefine the playing field. He's trying to deflect the criticism that he is getting from everywhere about his slow response to the COVID-19 pandemic and um, the slow response for testing, the slow response for social distancing, the slow response from the government's procurement of, of ventilators, and PPEs for health professionals, the slow response to everything. The question is, he's trying to redefine it as um, that he knew all along that this was serious, and but he didn't want to talk about it a year later, and he didn't want to upset the American public. So he's already admitted that he knew that there was a dire, serious situation, but because he's such a cheerleader, he didn't want to upset the American public. So his recent maneuver here yesterday was to point fingers at the World Health Organization saying that they were guilty and they compromised the fast response and they were at fault for not moving on this thing faster. And he now is considering um, restricting the funds that the United States uh, sends to the, uh, the World Health Organization. I believe it's about 14.6% of uh, that budget that the United States contributes. Uh, what's, what's your feeling about Donald Trump's ability to try to change the uh, nature of the playing field about responsibility and also trying to pin it on the World Health Organization. Winston, what do you think about that? Uh, it's sad, uh, fundamentally. Uh, it's not to say that that there's not a lot of um, uh, responsibility that's, that needs to be shared by different groups, whether it's governors, uh, World Health Organization, um, or, or the administration primarily. But in this case, the World Health Organization 
has been on this. It has been warning of since early January and, and saying we need to have um, systems in place and it's coming and it's here. And it's, it, they were uh, remiss for not declaring this a pandemic much earlier. Uh, I, I will agree with that. And that's the problem is that uh, a lot of times you see with Donald Trump is there is a, a, a small bit of truth or that you could suss out in there. But what happens is that tiny bit of truth then becomes the basis for the narrative for the big lie. And I encourage people to look at um, uh, an article, it was uh, in uh, today's uh, Washington Post by a uh, great sergeant called Hannity's, uh, Sean Hannity's latest propaganda actually exposes Trump epic's failure. And it talks about how the, uh, the, the, the new narrative, the Orwellian 1984 um, reframing of this as Trump as as a master and victor and savior of us all from this pandemic and is being written right now during this. And that is the tale that's being to um, the true believers. And that is what they're looking for. So I, uh, you know, again, I wouldn't expect anything less than uh, manipulation, deceit, and outright to, to people and the spin. So um, it doesn't surprise me, but people need to research this for themselves. They need to understand what actually happened who can bear some responsibility? If he went up to the American people and said, you know what, I, I messed up in this, it's, well, he's not gonna do this, but people people accept that. They can accept and say, and this is what we're doing because we messed up. They can deal with that. That is never going to happen with this man. Um, and, and there's going to be a lot of death because of that. And that is attributable to this. It's not exclusive blame, but um, passing this off on the World Health Organization or the media or anybody else is absolutely um irresponsible and unhelpful at this time yeah let me let me cut lanes in here and talk about the peter navarro the trade secretary's memo that was produced at the end of january and in that memo it clearly lined out um, mr navarro's concerns about a devastating human life uh the number of cases that would uh, most likely take place with COVID 19 the devastation of the economy and it was basically a cry uh, for the administration to take notice of this and treat it seriously like it should have been. And as of yesterday, Donald Trump acknowledged that, yes, Mr. Navarro was correct. Everything he said in the memo is correct. But then he said, I never saw it. So, you know, here is Donald Trump again trying with a, the hand of a magician to redefine the narrative and basically deflect his responsibilities by saying, I never saw the memo. It must have been my administration, and they don't tell me everything. So isn't he, isn't he responsible for his administration, his department heads, his the staff? Is, isn't as commander-in-chief, that as a leader, the, at being president of the United States, that he does take responsibility for, for all his administration, not just the ones that show him a memo or don't show him a memo? Stephanie, what do you think about that? Well, I continually am astonished at how he takes the daily he took over the daily briefing which is of course pence's uh, committee report and he uses that to promote himself and to do the rallies in the form of the television show instead of at the at the sites where he has his rallies but he also now can take the peter navarro memo which was meant to to point out how he had misstepped from the get-go and he turns it around into us uh, telling um what i heard him say on the briefing was how he it answered it was at the same time maybe post dated from when he stopped china from sending uh people here or travel here or some some uh deliveries here and so he's using that to uh rewrite the mm -hmm. narrative of his actions you know what, since stephanie that's a really good point i want to i want to interject something that's a really good point for every criticism that comes donald trump's way the first thing he leaps to is his travel ban from China. Well, let's look at that because it wasn't a travel ban. It was just non-US citizens that were putting in a travel ban. And by no means was he first because 36 other countries had done the same thing by February the 2nd. So let's talk about a Swiss cheese policy where all, all other citizens can go back and forth, back and forth and let the COVID-19 leapfrog um, back and forth between China and the United States, and that's exactly what happened. So Donald Trump's, um, his, his major chess move to say that, I ah, see what a good boy I am, I was on top of this, was a policy that was very, very fraught with, um, 
you know, inaccuracy and and the, it was a faulty policy. It wasn't a travel ban by any means. Well, exactly. And um, the concern is, of course, that he is using this stage of the we, the daily report. We have to listen to this daily. And then um, he rewrites, he re-speaks the narrative, retells the narrative. And that's a signal out to all of his representatives who are going to run this for the rest of the day and the week and the forever so that everybody's going to be confused about how all that happened, just as you described it, Tim. And so it's really important that that timeline be kept in the memory. I think there is some writing going on about how to keep that information alive and not have it just run over by this man who 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 has no has no holds on saying anything but what is going to be self-serving. Uh, much much more than doing anything to save the nation. Yeah. Well, later on the show we're going to talk about, but we might as well talk about it right now, and that's Fox News because. <laughs> They created the initial narrative that this um, COVID-19 was, was, was hyped up. It was a democratic ploy to make Donald Trump look bad. It was quote unquote a hoax. Uh, there's now the first lawsuit from Washington state. And that lawsuit basically is taking Fox News to task that they misrepresented the facts that they had. And that by misrepresentation, that has now caused much more life, the loss of life that was certainly necessary had the United States acted earlier and had uh, you know locked down certain certain states much faster. Um, any comment about these lawsuits that are going to crop up against Fox News, Winston? What do you think about that? I don't. You know, if you're if you're duped enough to be watching Fox News, then uh, you know you're going to reap the the results of that. And honestly, I, I feel for people that that that's their source of news and that they feel that that is the true news and that is and, and you know it's it's uh, essentially um the the official news channel of donald trump so very occasionally you'll get some contrary or even neutral voices out of there but uh they do come up with some things that just say it how it is and i'm always happy when that happens it's important to follow what fox news says just so you can understand what's getting out to uh, those folks. But um, we do have a, a free press in this country and people are allowed to choose what they want to watch. And you have to have responsible watching just like you have to eat responsibly and um, you know look both ways before you cross the street. So I don't know that the lawsuits are gonna go anywhere. They will say this was our interpretation of the facts at the time. And uh, I, I think it's mm -hmm. at this point uh, noise and I, more important is I, I would not like to see the other side happen where the enemies of the people, as uh, Donald Trump has often described uh, the press, um, as well as many other things, uh, would become subject to uh, these sorts of lawsuits to shut them down um, as a, a, of truth and, and reason, even if it is hyperbole as well on the left. Stephanie, what's your what's your thoughts about um, potential class action suits against uh, Fox News for uh, the alleged misrepresentation of how serious COVID-19 was? Well, I certainly support Winston's comments. I agree with them and see that that cause is a, a steep hill. Um, and uh, I, I just, and it takes a long time. And so it, that's not bothering anybody that's in the suit. Um, it because it takes so long to get through the courts. So um, I, what is the remedy? I, I, I don't know. I mean, it used to be that the corroboration of information across various venues would be one way to check up for the ordinary citizen viewer, because most of us don't have time. Most people out there are too busy or you know dealing with other issues to, to be doing the checking on the factual output of a, of a huge resource like Fox and um, how it is that they can continue to to um, deliver less than authentic and checked uh, information is beyond me and then that it just and when it differs from the other news outlets who may have some corroborative uh, commonality they just take theirs as the truth so we're up against some beliefs and uh, attitudes and values that are in place. And those are the tectonic plates of the brain and they move slowly, if at all. 
and uh, we just hope that uh, at some point they will move a lot like they do in nature and yeah. uh, there would be some new insight and considerations, yeah. but we're just not getting that. Doesn't this play into our cultural divide of this country? Doesn't this play into why there's certain states right now that absolutely refuse to have a stay-at-home order for, for, their, for their citizens? Um, these kind of states, this cultural divide is, is dead set against uh, prohibiting churches from holding church services and having parishioners, you know, shoulder to shoulder, certainly within six feet of one another and being possible vectors of passing this, this, this virus along. Um, doesn't that say something about our cultural divide in this country where, where science is laid to rest and um, belief in Donald Trump, Fox News, and, you know, our way of life, and we're, we are not submit to a virus now or any other day. What are we going to do about that? Uh, Winston, why don't you take that on? Boy, you know, it's, it's a great question. I would encourage viewers to um, give a day of your life to Fox News. Turn it on from the morning and just listen to it all day so you understand what the what half the nation is getting their news from. It is the most, I think the number one news channel for um, is probably Hannity. Um, listen to see what the other side is saying, and not even the other side, just Fox News. Um, listen to Rush Limbaugh all day. Listen to uh, you know this 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 talk radio which we which make your skin crawl, um, but it, it's important to understand this other side. And I would encourage other people to who maybe listen to Fox all day to put on MSNBC or even just watching CNN. Uh, you know, and CNN is the real one where you notice uh, Donald Trump goes after CNN or or NBC because these are really mainstream media, uh, especially mm -hmm. CNN, and so. If you can attack CNN, um, you don't have to worry about M MSNBC. He never talks about Rachel Maddow, but he's worried about CNN because that is where people might, uh, you know, become believers uh, from there. So that's where the focus is. But I would say it does speak to this larger divide in our country. It speaks to this. this it, we've seen this federalism come week where it's a bit against the federal government or where they're also talking about building sort of cooperatives with each other. Um, it's an interesting new uh, reality that's been forged in this um, in this template that it, it's been forced on us. But you know what? I think that a lot of these governors are just saying when you're given lemonade, uh, lemons make lemonade of it. So it makes sense yes. that they're having to go to these things uh, because necessity is the mother of invention. And I don't know that it's it's really stopped since 150 years about these things. For those of us that may have a broader, expansive vision of America that holds universal values, that may not be the case with half the nation. They may say, that's fine in your section of the country, your city, but that's not who we are in my in my town. And that we're seeing that okay. writ large here. Yeah, I mean, Stephanie, here we got a case where we're trying to tamp down a virus that is that spreads like wildfire. It doesn't take much for it to take hold in communities. Um, we're trying to use science to stop the death of, of, of fellow citizens here in this country. Yet we have the um, some in these these states, some of these cultural divides. Again, a refusal to do so because um, it's our right to have our churches open, and it's our right to practice our religion, and it's our right to basically have parishioners ignore social distancing. What should, what should we do about that? Should, cause we're all, we're all connected. We're all, you know, other than in here in Hawaii, we're an island. Um, basically the mainland United States is all connected. Should there, should rule and science take over a uh, cultural divide? What do you think? Well, again, we're up against um, the values, the attitudes the belief systems that are driving a lot of this, but th this time, there's going to be, uh, with no remedy, there's going to be a tr tremendous cost, and, and it's going to include death. And I think that uh, we may see this um, even more than we're already seeing it now, because they say that because the rural cases are so low, there are only one or two out there in the rural states, um, that, well, yeah, that means once this New York thing peaks, we'll be able to, you know, change 
get back to business. And uh, the problem is, of course, without any attention to the scientific information that we have in just loads of and wonderful experts and institutions devoted to it, we're going to probably see um, what has happened in New York City, uh, the doubling of the cases within a week. And the same thing's going to happen in the rural areas, much less going into places like the Indian reservations, which are pretty much still untouched at this point. And once that rolls, there's no hospitals or very few. There are no doctors out there. So once that opens up, we are going to have cataclysm in the rest of the country. So with, with, um, with us being divided, and not united, we, how does the country help itself? And we have to help ourselves overcome that divide. And that speaks to leadership. And we have not had the leadership that will pull us all together to get ready for these things. We're getting ready for nothing. And in the daily briefing, there's never anything said about uniting or getting things ready to meet increased needs. It's just all about, it's all going to go away, magical thinking. But um, what what is ahead of us is probably the worst. I mean, and that's even before we get to the second wave, because the whole country hasn't been affected yet. So the timeline is not over. And one of the biggest concerns I have about that is if we are going to get this much promised inoculation, this, um, the, this um, way to get out from under, having no protection, get the immunity, the president and the leadership is not saying anything about how we're going to get ready to deliver that. So what about if somebody had the shot tomorrow? Where, who's going to deliver it? I mean, if we can't get masks and gowns and, and we can't take care of our patients, then where, where's all the hypodermic needles? Over? How are we going to make that happen? So the futility of the, this daily briefing is so clear, it's clear to me. I, it's not doing enough for us to either come together to support ourselves as, as fellow Americans or to get us ready to, to take this on. We still have not taken it on. To well, the this, this may be the new federalism where it's a lack of a concerted effort by the federal government to act as it should right now. Um, we're leaving it up to the states. Donald Trump has said so many, many times. You know, it's, this is the state's responsibility. We're not in the business of getting your ventilators. We're not in the business of getting your you know, personal protection equipment. We're just not in that business. Well, what business are we in if that's not the business during this pandemic and this horrific loss of life? So I'm gonna leave it there. Um, I just have one quick question. And that is, what were your thoughts about the Captain Crozier of the uh, Teddy Roosevelt, um, the ship and his his concern for his men and the, the spread of the virus and how he was reassigned or, or basically asked not to be captain anymore. And then the Navy secretary's comments, uh, I believe his name is Thomas Modley, his comments about uh, Captain Crozier. Any thoughts about that before we uh, call it a day? Winston? Well, well we, yeah, Winston, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say, I have a nephew who's a Navy pilot. This captain was a, a, a Hornet pilot for years. He was a jet fighter pilot. He's got this incredible background. It's not, he's not naive. I just wanted to make a point. He is not naive. He knows, he knows the risks and, and that, that jeopardy. So go ahead, Winston. I'm sorry. I just had to say. Oh, no, yeah, it's true. He, he's, he's, he was trying to protect his troops. If you saw the video of him talking to his troops and the, 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 the response that he had from them, he is looking after these people and he spoke truth to power and got fired for it. And then the net messed up firing him, got fired. Uh, so, uh, because he, he made the Donald look bad. So it's, it's, it's tragic, but I'm heartened to see people trying to stand up and do the right thing. Even if they get, um, even if they have consequences, let's put this fellow on the speaking circuit from now on, you know, uh, he'll get standing ovations wherever he goes. There you go. He already that's got them point. from his own sailors. Yes. Yeah, from his own better. sailors. And that's, yeah. that's, it. No greater play, praise than that. No greater praise. Fabulous. Yeah. Well, I think Donald Trump felt that he was boxed into a corner. Yeah. He was, Donald Trump felt he was uh, pushed into a corner on that because uh, this captain did care about his men and, and he probably did go up the chain of command and nothing happened about it. So we, we don't know the facts about that just yet. That will all come out in the wash. So until was, then, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. It was the San Francisco Chronicle and they're not sure how it got leaked. But uh, let me yeah. just say one thing is that let's hope that 
that we don't have to ask for this man to be included at the next State of the Union address in 21. Oh, Stephanie, good maybe point. We'll have somebody that will oh. bring him on. <laughs> well, it maybe would, Rush yeah. Limbaugh will make an encore pr presentation. You never know. So, <laughs> all right, well, God forbid. All right, so here's the deal. We're out of time. Uh, I, I'm going to make another prediction, and I, I have a funny feeling I'm going to be proven correct, and that is next week is going to be just as wild as this week, if not wilder. And unfortunately, we're going to have exponential counts of uh, the death the death toll, and that's something that yes. none of us want to see. And uh, God bless America, and just hope that we get through this with the least amount of deaths that are affecting our population. So... Uh, Winston, thank you so much. Stephanie, thank you very much. And we'll see you guys next week uh, for Trump Week. It's Wednesday, 11 o'clock. We'll see you then. Aloha. Well,